this Artemis is right around the corner. She's under tower, so we don't want to go into lane. We want to wait for her to get out of lane. We're going to blink, use our two, use our monkey, get a basic attack, and we're able to get the pick onto the Artemis. So we rotated right because we saw that the Artemis was very weak. If she overstepped, we'd probably be able to get a pick on her. And that's how you want to kind of judge if you're going to deviate from the normal rotation. What a do, Scooby Boo! It's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we're gonna be playing Hun Bats in Jungle. I was streaming the other day. Somebody made a donation and requested to see Hun Bats. I was unable to get around to it, so I thought I'd make a Hun Bats video for them. They said that they were new to Jungle and new to Hung Bats, so we're gonna try to include some Hun Bats tips and some jungler tips. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you subscribe and check out some more content. If you are a returning viewer, I'm sure many of you are aware we do have a Hunbats video on the channel already, but I wanted to go ahead and make a more specific video for this person or this donor. Starting with Hunbats kit, Hunbats' one is Somersault. Hunbats is going to jump in the air and he's going to land down, dealing damage and slowing enemies. As you level up this ability, the slow is going to increase from 20% to 40% and the slow is going to last for 2 seconds. Hunbats' two is Overhand Smash. Hunbats is going to smash his staff onto the ground in front of him in a cone and deal damage. Hunbats' is three. Hunbats is going to throw his monkey in a line attack. It's going to pounce on enemy targets, dealing damage on each pounce. Enemy gods can only be hit once, but jungle camps can be hit multiple times by the monkey. Pressing the 3 again is going to teleport Hunbats to the next target, and the monkey is going to bounce 4 times. Hunbats' ultimate, fear no evil. Hunbats is going to summon a totem. Enemies caught within the radius are going to be feared away from the center or the totem and take damage every 0.25 seconds. As you level up this ability, the lifetime is going to increase from 1 second to 2 seconds, and Hunbats' is passive and few strikes. After using an ability, Hun Bats' next basic attack will deal 15% increased damage. Now that we've reviewed Hun Bats' abilities, let's go ahead and review what we've done as a jungler. We have Jungler's Blessing, the tier 1 of Jotun's Wrath, and this is going to give us enough money to get one health potion and get the Hand of the Gods. We're going to start on speed, we're going to go blue with our solo laner working on the blue buff, and then we're going to go to the Harpy Camp and use our Hand of the Gods. This is going to allow us to get to mid really quickly. If we went from speed, harpies, then blue, and then rotated mid, we would get there later than if we do the speed, blue, harpies. We want to try to get to mid, establish a little bit of lane pressure by clearing the wave, and then hopefully we're able to invade the enemy red buff. This game, the Bakasaur was able to get there and clear the red buff before we could invade it, so we're just going to rotate back and get our red buff after a wave. We're ideally looking to get 900 gold before we back, and if we hit enough camps, hit enough mid wave, we are going to reach that amount. So we go ahead and drop the red buff. We're going to rotate back to our harpies. Then we're going to give the hand of the gods a little love tap. With hun bats, we want to put a point into our three, put a point into our two or one. Kind of depends what you think you'll need most in that mid lane engagement. Put a point into the other one at level three. Then we're going to want to max out our three, max out our ultimate. Max out our 2, then max out our 1. So we sell our health potion and that gives us enough money to get the tier 2 version of boots. We always want to get the tier 2 version over the tier 1 because the tier 1 is not going to provide any power. The tier 2 will provide a little bit of power. So now that we're starting on speed again, we're basically starting another rotation. This time our solo laner is down, so they're going to miss out on this golden XP, but that's okay. We're just going to keep with our rotation. We're going to work on the blue buff. Hun Bats does have an attack chain, so let's say it's a normal hit. Oh, we're getting invaded. We're just going to fall back. It's a normal hit, a less than normal hit, and then a stronger than normal hit. Our harpies are up. We're going to go ahead and hit these. Next, we're going to go to mid and try to just evaluate what needs to be done next. The mid harpies are up and our red is still on cooldown, so we're not going to be able to rotate directly there. We're just going to show face in mid. 
This Hera is pretty weak. If we get close enough, we might be able to get a pick onto her. But she's kind of playing under tower, so we're not really going to risk it. Instead, we're just going to come over here, hit this small harpy. We always want to be trying to rotate and hit some kind of camp. Red is about to be up, so we're going to go ahead and start working on this. Looks like Outwash is starting to fall back for it. Outwash is also pretty low on mana, so I don't think he's going to be clearing the wave. We just hit level 5, and with Hunt Bats, our ultimate is very important for how we engage. We want to engage often when we have our ultimate, and we probably want to not engage too much when our ultimate is down. So we go ahead and drop the back harpies. If we look above our health bar, the speed is going to be spawning in about 22 seconds. We're going to go ahead and back whenever it gets to around 20 seconds, and what this is going to allow us to do is buy an item or two, start rotating to our speed buff, and arrive right as it's about to spawn. So that's how you can kind of judge when you need to back and when you need to keep farming. Bakasaur is cleaning up and right, not cleaning up, let's hope he doesn't clean up. We're going to go ahead and clear our speed buff. Then we're going to go to blue. So if we wanted to gank left lane or attack left lane trying to get some pressure onto the Thor, we could clear the harpies before going to blue. And what this will allow us to do is get the farm and get blue and then attack left without having to worry about missing out on our harpies. Since we did not do that, we're going to rotate back, get our harpies, try to maximize our farm. Then we're going to make our way up. Oh, looks like we're going to try to do a little gank attempt and left. Looks like we changed our mind. Never mind. Hera's here. We're going to throw our monkey. I guess we missed our monkey. We're going to get a basic. We're going to use our ultimate, get another basic. Hera uses her ultimate. So we're going to just peel out. Even though we didn't get the pick right there, that's good. We know that Hera does not have her beads for about another two to three minutes. So the next time we get our ultimate, if we ult Hera, she's not going to have beads. This Artemis is right around the corner. She's under tower, so we don't want to go into lane. We want to wait for her to get out of lane. We're going to blink, use our two, use our monkey, get a basic attack, and we're able to get the pick onto the Artemis. So we rotated right because we saw that the Artemis was very weak. If she overstepped, we'd probably be able to get a pick on her. And that's how you want to kind of judge if you're going to deviate from the normal rotation. If the Thor or the Artemis in this case are weak, we might want to make an appearance in that lane. We're going to go ahead and help the Owl Posh with the Oracles and then rotate back to the red buff. So each camp, and since the mid-season patch kind of has a little bonus or a little extra mechanic to them, the red buff is really the only one you need to work out, watch out for. If the red buff, the prime or the main minion at the red buff, the large one, falls below 50% health, he's going to attack faster and with a little bit more power. This can kill you in the early game. So you really need to be careful around the red buff, but all the other camps should be pretty easy to clear. We're going to go ahead and pick up our speed buff. Hit the jungle shrine. The jungle shrine gets a chalice every time a jungle camp goes down for us. And then whenever we give it one basic attack, it's going to give everybody on our team some gold. So you do want to try to hit it whenever you can. We're going to go ahead and drop the blue buff for our Guan Yu. We do have our ultimate. We know that Hera does not have beads. So we're going to rotate towards mid. We're going to jump over the wall, throw our ultimate on her, she's very weak, we're going to hit her with our monkey, and we're able to get the pick onto the Hera. So with junglers that have an ultimate that burn enemy beads, you always want to check to see which enemies have beads and which enemies do not. We know that Hera does have beads, but we already used our ultimate on her, so her beads were on cooldown. Thor does not have beads, and there's a good chance that their support raw and their jungler Bakasora do not have beads. We're going to go ahead and hit this camp with our Baron Somdi. So this game, I feel like we are doing a lot of invading. Most jungle games are not like this, but we're going to hit camps as we see them. You don't have to back right as your speed's about to respawn. 
but in the early game, I think it allows you to kind of keep the same pace around the map. Our red buff's about to respawn, so we're going to go ahead and clear this. We have a lot of pressure on the map. We are able to take the enemy purple and the enemy red, while also having time to make it back for our camps. So here's a good example. Our speed's going to respawn before we can get to it, but there's no other real camp for us to hit, so we're just going to kind of clear everything and then back at our pace. So after going into Power Boots, we're going to be going into Jotun's Wrath. Jotun's Wrath is going to provide 40 power, 150 mana, 10 flat penetration, and 20% cooldown. Jotun's Wrath is one of the few tier 3 items that does not have a passive. The 20% cooldown in the flat 10 penetration is really why we're getting this item. The 20% cooldown is going to allow us to ult more often, which is going to be very helpful because we really want to be engaging with our ult and kind of being passive when we don't have our ultimate up. Enemy ultimate down. Guan Yu saying that Thor's ult is down. It couldn't be helped. We're going to go ahead and give him a little help over here, see if we can ult. We use our ult, push him towards a wall, we hit him with the basic, hit him with our monkey, teleport to the monkey. We're going to jump, we're going to use our two. We poke him out. We unfortunately did not get the pick, but that is all right. That should relieve some lane pressure for Guan Yu. If Thor stays around, he's going to have to kind of balance his low health with trying to clear the wave. Bakasaur is here. We're really not trying to engage with him in jungle. While we're on cooldown, I'm pretty sure he can just basic attack us to death. So we got to kind of watch out for him. We're going to throw up a ward for mid. Jump over the wall. Throw up a ward on the other side. Up. Oh. He already warded for us. We don't even have to. Oh, a lot of people here trying to defend their red buff. We're going to turn around, check the corner, see if there's anything we can do. We throw a monkey, but we miss. With Hun Bats and maxing out our three first, we really want to try to land our monkey as often as possible. If we miss our monkey, we do not want to fight this fight. If we land our monkey, we can think about fighting the fight. And the reason we want to engage with their ultimate is one, it does a lot of damage and it crowd controls the enemy. So they're going to be walking in a straight line, which makes hitting our monkey very easy. Ideally, our ult combo would be ult, land a basic attack, so we get that 15% increased damage from Humbats' passive. Land our monkey, get another basic attack, land our two, get another basic attack, and then hopefully they're dead. But if not, we can jump on them or kind of jump away. We're really saving our jump to either engage on somebody or to disengage the fight. We're rarely going to jump in on somebody unless we know that we can burn them down. We're really saving our jump to get out of a fight, get out of a bad spot. Looks like Baron needs a little bit of help, so we're just going to kind of skip our camps, see if we can rotate mid and help out. We're going to throw our ultimate up, get our monkey onto Hera, and we're able to get the pick onto her. We try to get our two onto the raw, but he's able to peel back. We're rotating with our Hun or with our Baron Somdi. Guan Yu's going for his blue buff, so we're gonna go back, try to help him out with it, and also get some of that gold and XP. So we really didn't deviate from the rotation path until about our third or fourth rotation. I feel like in the early game you want to just speed, blue, harpies, mid, red. Hopefully enemy red, mid, you're red. And then kind of just keep hitting camps in between. In the mid game, that's when we're looking to kind of shift from the rotation a little bit and go where we're needed. Then in the late game, it's all about just saving our ultimate for the team fight. We miss our monkey, so we're just going to run away. In mid right now, I feel like people are trying to piece each other up. They're trying to find the right spacing, land some abilities. We throw our ability, we miss, we're out. We're going to go clear camps. We're going to keep leveling up. We hit some camps, now our abilities are off cooldown, so we're going to rotate back in. Our ultimate is unfortunately down, and we miss our monkey, so we're just going to run away again. We're going to clear this camp. Our red buff is up, so we're going to rotate towards that. Our purple buff's up, if Charwin does not drop it, we might rotate over there and try to get some of the gold and XP. Looks like we're going to make it there in time. We're going to jump in, and then we're going to go ahead and back. 
After going into Jotuns for that 20% cooldown, we're going to be going into Hydra's Lament. Hydra's Lament is going to give us 40 power, 10% cooldown reduction, and 10 MP5. For 8 seconds after an ability, our next basic attack will deal an additional 40% damage. It also has another passive that we're going to gain 2.5% MP5. Not percent MP5. We're going to gain 2.5 MP5 per 10% of our missing mana. So Humbath's passive is giving us 15% additional damage on our next basic after an ability. And then Hydra is going to be giving us 40%. So we're going to land an ability, land a basic, and that basic is going to deal 55% more damage. We use our monkey to teleport onto Thor. He's a tanky boy. We're not really going to be able to pick him down. So we're going to kind of just get a little bit of poke. Show face, not allow him to get the tower, and then rotate to our blue buff. Drop that for the Guan Yu. We do have our ultimate if we want to try to get spicy. His hammer is down. We're going to blink, cast out our ultimate, push him back towards us. He uses his ultimate, and he's able to get away with his ultimate. Right here, we're kind of trying to act like bait, see if we can get him to land on us, but he's smart and just flies away. We get tagged by Hera. I think they have wards there because she knew I was coming around that corner and kind of precast that ability. We get hit by a raw ult. Luckily, we are healthy enough that we were able to survive it. We're going to hit the camp, rotate back to another camp. So we're really not hanging out in anyone's lane too long. We do a little bit in the beginning so that way we can get pressure with our mid laner and then rotate with him to get something. But other than that, we're really just going from camp to camp, kind of showing up in a lane, throwing an ability or two, and then rotating back to get some more camps. We have our ultimate in about 25 seconds, so we kind of only have our monkey and our two, using our three to get away. We're going to go ahead and back because we know our speed is going to be respawning pretty soon. After going into Hydra's Lament, we're going to be going into Erendite. Erendite's going to provide us 70 physical power and 10% cooldown reduction. So that's going to be 40% cooldown reduction, which is the maximum amount of cooldown reduction we can have. Then it, is, it has a passive that after we ult, we're going to reveal all enemy gods within 120 units for 8 seconds. While moving towards the enemy, we're going to gain 30% movement speed. Our next basic attack is going to deal 40 damage plus 30% of our power. This effect can only occur once every 45 seconds. We use our ultimate, we get our monkey off, we use our two, and we're able to get the pick onto the Bakasaur. So we're gaining between Hydras and our passive 55% extra damage on our next basic attack after an ability. Then with Heartseeker, we're going to be dealing some additional power scaling on that basic attack. We're not looking to fight this. We will throw a monkey. We're a little weak. We're going to use our Aegis. And then we're going to jump over the wall. Humbats can jump over walls. Not every jump allows people to jump over a wall. Well, I guess dashes don't. Most jumps do. So we have our Erendite online. Our team is really cleaning up this game. After going into Erendite, we would go into Heartseeker. Heartseeker will provide us 65 power, 200 mana, 20 MP5, and 10% penetration. It has a passive that whenever we damage an enemy with an ability, it's going to remove 2% of the target's maximum health. This effect can scale up. Starting at 200 power, it'll start scaling up, and then at 400 power, it'll cap out at 5% per ability hit. Subsequent hits deal 75% of the bonus damage for the next 3 seconds. So we're going to go ahead and group with our team, kind of we're, we're going to let them push the tower. After going into Heartseeker, we would go into probably Mantle of Discord, get some defenses online. This will put us over the cooldown percentage, but we plan on selling Jotun's Wrath because it is an early game item, not a late game item. It doesn't even have a passive. It's just that cooldown to allow us to really get our ultimate off as much as possible in the mid and early game. So once we sell that, we'll be at 30% cooldown, but we're probably going to sell our boots, but I'll have the full build in the description down below. And the enemy team surrenders. 
Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. The stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.